Uh, in this video, what I would like to do is just uh, walk you through the process of building an Apex application. Uh, I've been posting some labs for you to work through so that uh, you learn how to do this process. Uh, but I also thought that giving you a good uh, a video might help. You know, some people might find the video to be somewhat instructive or if you're reading the instructions that I've posted and you find that something is ambiguous, you're not able to understand, uh, then you might just take a look at the video and that might clarify exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, uh, and again, as I've mentioned in uh, mentioned on Blackboard, uh, the, the idea is that whatever we are seeing here is what you will be doing for your project. Okay, so going through these labs that I'm posting is extraordinarily important for you to get a handle on the project. Otherwise, there's uh, quite a bit of stuff to learn within Oracle Apex and you can easily get lost. And if you delay your project too much, then, you know, the last week it's going to be really a rush to complete the project. So I strongly suggest that uh, you start early and uh, devote a little bit of time every week to getting the project done. And essentially what you'll do is uh, mirror whatever is in the lab in the context of your project. Okay, so that said, I'm just going to walk you through a little bit of Application Express. Oracle Application Express, of course, this screen... Uh, you're already very familiar with. This is the login screen for Apex. So I'm going to first sign in. Okay, I'm going to enter my password to sign in. And you already know that as soon as you sign in, you're going to see the main screen of Apex. And you can access the the two main features of Apex, uh, Apex that we'll be using are the Application Builder and the SQL Workshop. Uh, the SQL Workshop, of course, you've already used extensively. You know exactly what it does. Uh, and the Application Builder is a feature that we have not looked at yet. If you have not done the labs, you wouldn't have seen it yet. And we'll be talking about that and a little bit of SQL Workshop also right now. And of course, you already know that you can access SQL Workshop and Application Builder either by using these icons or of course you can access them using the, the menu options on top. They take you to the same place. Uh, so the menu options have the small advantage that you can drop down the feet, drop down this and then select the specific aspect that you want to uh, go to right away here. Same thing with, with the skill workshop. Whereas if you choose the, uh, the icon, then you have to of course go through this. It doesn't matter. It's really minor. Okay, now uh, I'm going to go into application builder. And then it shows me all the applications that I already have, okay? And uh, in fact, in our lab, uh, the first lab was about, uh, of course, you may see a different set of applications here. You won't see exactly the same thing. You will probably see the sample database application. Okay. And you may see some other things or you may not see anything else. Uh, an application is uh, that, let's say you've got a business situation for that business situation, you have already designed a database. Okay, and of course, why did you design a database for that business situation? Because you want to uh, use a computer-based information system to support the decision. So for example, if it's a library, right? So the library has a number of books, the library has a number of borrowers, the library has vendors, the library has uh, uh, you know, an accounting department, all of these things. Okay, so now in order to run the library, you obviously need to keep track of all the assets that the library has, like books and so on. You have to keep track of all the, the borrowers or the patrons of the library. And as and when the patrons uh, borrow items from the library, you have to keep track of who has borrowed what. And when they return the items, you have to record the fact that the items have been returned. And if they were returned late, you have to record the fact that there are fines which are due on the account and of course when people make payments of the fines then you have to record the fact that some of the fines have been paid up and similarly there are a lot of other transactions that take place for example uh, when the library buys books acquires uh, books they may place purchase orders with vendors then the vendors deliver the items and then of course those items that they delivered go into the collection of the library and then of course the vendors have to be paid the vendors would send invoices all of these business processes that take place within a library have to be managed. And uh, instead of using a paper-based system, you would use a computer-based system, right? 
So we are really trying to develop an application, a business application to help with all of these things. Okay, uh, so uh, let's take a look at building just an application. Okay, an application is what you would build and within the application you will add a number of pages for each of these functionalities. Okay, so first let's look at how to create an application. So within the application builder, uh, you can either, uh, you know, just pull down this and select create or alternately if you go into the application builder scene, I'm sorry, I'm just going to go back. If you go to, into the application builder, you can click create to create an application. Alternately, you can click the create here to create an application in many different ways. I'm going to click on the icon here to create an application. And as you can see here, uh, you can use Apex to build a desktop application, which is the kind we are going to build. Or of course, you can use it to build a mobile application. And then there are other applications, application types that, uh, that Apex supports. Okay, so as we saw, uh, Apex can be used to create different types of applications and we are just going to be developing a desktop application because people are going to be using the application on their, on their computer via a browser. Okay, so that's already selected by default. We click next and then it's the user interface. We've selected desktop. The schema, which is the database on which it's going to be based, is your schema name, the workspace name that we have. And by default, it gives an application name, uh, you know, based on your name. So let's say my application, I want to call it as test app, whatever name we want to give. It generates an application number for its own. And uh, Apex comes with a bunch of built-in themes. Okay, and then uh, you can select set a theme. Okay, so there are all the standard themes. And then uh, you, you can, uh, we have, it's showing us the, universal theme right now which is the default that we have selected okay uh, and then theme style it says is uh, uh, is Vita so we can select something else if you want you know Vista uh, or uh, uh, white whatever right Vita and we can select something these are all just you know bells and whistles on top of this so once you have selected all this you can say next or you could actually just say create application it will create an application and then it shows you um, that your application will have a page, which is the home page of the application. That is there by default. And later on, we can add pages. Right now, it's giving us the option to add a page, but we won't look at it right now. Okay, so then I say next. And then it says, do you have any shared components that you want to include? So for example, if you're developing lots of applications on Apex, then it's possible that there are some useful components that you've already developed for some other application that you just want to reuse in this application. Okay. Now, given that this is our first Apex application, there are no shared components, so we leave it as no. Click on Next. And then on this screen, there are some options we can select. The important aspect uh, uh, option is Authentication Scheme, which is after you've built your application, how will people be validated to run your application? In other words, how will people log into your application? Okay, now of course you already have an Apex account. So what it's saying is do you, by default it's going to use that Apex account to log in. In fact, within your Apex account, you can create additional users. Right now, your Apex account is an administrative account. You can do lots of powerful things. But suppose you want to build an application and then you want to have regular Joe users who won't have access to all of these features that you're using to develop an application, right? So they'll just access your application, run, run whatever, do whatever the application allows them to do. And once they exit, they're out. You know, they cannot create a page or build an application, nothing. They're just users, right? So you could create user applications and so on. So whatever it is, even if you do that, uh, the scheme you will select for authentication is Application Express Accounts. Okay, so you can do that. If you do this, then your application is going to have a login page as well. Right, it will take the username, password, validate it, and all of that. But I suggest 
would have to have no authentication at this point, uh, mainly because uh, if you have authentication enabled, then every time you try to test your application, you'll have to log in. It's just a real uh, irritation because you know you'll add a little bit of a feature to a page. You want to see how it looks. You make a change. You want to see how it looks. So every time you will have to go and log into your application. That's just a, a huge irritant. So uh, when I'm developing, I just say no authentication. Okay. And then of course there are things like date formats and time formats and time stop. If you want, you can select all of these. The defaults are pretty good for us. Then we say next. Okay, and then it's just showing us all the options we selected. We can then say create application. That's it. Application is being created. So this we are in this application that we just built, test app. Okay, and then it's got the one page, the home page, right? If you want to create additional pages, you can do that. You can create additional pages. Okay, so in fact, you can now uh, run your application by clicking on run application. Of course, the application doesn't really do much. It just says test app. There are no menus, nothing. It's just a home page, empty page. There's no functionality. Okay, so that's just the application we built. Now, after doing this, what you will do is to build lots of pages, add a lot of pages to the application. Okay, and of course, in this home page, you can put some, uh, you know, fancy banner kind of thing as well. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if it were a library, you'll add a menu here for managing users, managing books, managing vendors, managing purchase orders. You'll add menus for all of those. Okay, so that's really what we're going to be looking at in subsequent labs.